So I don't want to start with so. When a 500, oh, $200. <laughs> Why would you pay over a thousand dollars for a 3D printer when a $200 3D printer could do, you know, a pretty good job? Well, turns out there's a couple of reasons why you might want to make that decision. Why? We'll go with it. The low poly dyno ex erupting. Let's pull this down. Hey everybody. So for the low poly dyno erupting volcano project, I was very happy to have access to this Wido F192 3D printer because it's got a large build volume and dual nozzles, but I could have with just a little bit of ingenuity probably been able to do it on the Ender 3, a 3D printer which a lot of you are familiar with. So why does this machine cost $200 and this machine costs over a thousand dollars it seems like for that price gap there should be a reason yeah there's a number of reasons but let's take a look at each of these printers individually first for behind scenes information step-by-step -step instructions of the builds featured and much more visit 3dpprofessor.com now the ender 3 is a 3d printer that hardly needs any introduction. Chances are you've heard about it already online because it's a $200 3D printer. Well, more accurately, it's a $200 3D printer kit. Now, I, I don't want to knock it. As a kit, it's the easiest kit that I've ever put together, but it is still going to require a day of your time to put together. I put this together at the Makerspace, and when I say I put it together, I mean I found other people who were willing to put it together for me because I'm just burnt out on building kits. Even a kit as simple as the Ender 3, I just didn't want to do it. And the people who did it for me, thank you guys very much for helping me out here at the Makerspace. They also didn't want to do it. It took them a day to get this thing together. And in the process of putting it together, we made a couple of observations. For one, this cable here is just, it doesn't have a good flow to get to the, the nozzle where it's coming out of. And so we used a rubber band to hold that up. And the filament still runs very close to the Z-axis screw, just like all Creality printers, which I don't know why they did that. Why didn't they move the Z-axis to the other side and just leave this here. It makes no sense to me, but nevertheless they did. And so we've added a little piece of wire to keep the filament away. And there, there were a half a dozen other little choices like that during the building of this thing that we said, we'll have to get to or fix, or we, we made quick fixes at the time. But for the price, you really can't complain. And the printer does work fantastically. Solid construction means that the prints come out looking fantastic even from the beginning even though it's only a single nozzle machine but for the price you can't really ask for more the print bed is fairly big for the price it's a 200 by 200 which means that makes it twice as big as a mini 3d printer well eight times if you count the height and the volume of it but still fantastic you could even print the low poly dyno volcano on this one the single color version without the platforms for the dynos to sit on but you could print that all in one piece on this printer because i designed it for that and so this is this is about the size of an ultimaker print volume and so comparable to some of the first ultimakers that's pretty much what you're getting with this printer but only at 200 dollars which is a good deal for the price now I've said that a number of times, for the price, for the price. I keep on saying for the price. What do I mean? Do I mean that because this is a cheap printer, if it doesn't do something, I'm supposed to just let that go and forget about it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we're saying. It's not perfect. There's a lot of things about this printer that I wish weren't. The, the interface is still Marlin, and it's a confusing Marlin. It's frustrating to get through. You really, if you want to do it well, you're going to have to take the extra expense and time to set up a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint or Astroprint. But for the price, the, there's no enclosure. So your prints, uh, it's going to have a hard time printing ABS. Although we did test it with other materials and nylon and, and Ninja Flex Armadillo, and those worked okay, but ABS just fell apart. So you have to build an enclosure, but for the price, for the price, for the price. It's something that I keep saying with this printer. It's not super capable, but it's bare bones functional. And if that's all that you can afford, or if that's all that you want, then yeah, the Ender 3, it's a good solid choice. 
However, if you want something more, there's an option for that. The WeDo F192 is a massive 3D printer. It has got all the bells and whistles and features that you would like. It's everything that the Ender can do and more. It's fully enclosed. It's got a little fan to draw the fumes out. It's a filtered fan and that's super cool. Editing desk Joe here. I recorded this video before my emergency recording about we can't breathe around our 3D printers anymore. And while this 3D printer does have an outgoing fan that is filter, it's a carbon micro filter. It can't filter out the volatile organic compounds that we are also worried about. However, it is just a hair's breadth to getting some tubing and pulling that outside, which so far is the best option, being fully enclosed and having an outgoing fan. All you'd have to do to be completely safe with this printer is take a bit of tubing and then put it outside your window so that you are venting those outside. And hey, this printer would be perfect. So big point in its favor there. Cool. And as soon as I turned it on, the starting ditty gave away to me the guts of this machine. That is the same ditty that my Replicator 1 has played since I first started with 3D printing. And that ditty was created by MakerBot for their Mighty Board series of 3D printers, the Replicator 1 and the Replicator 2, and a couple other machines as well. They open sourced those machines, and FlashForge took that open source design and iterated on it. Now, MakerBot making those designs open source might have not been the best decision for them as a business, and certainly not to gain investors, but it was a great decision for the community and for the future because FlashForge has really taken that design and run with it over the years and polished it and made it just fantastic. Now the downside of it being a FlashForge based machine based on the Replicator 1 is that the Replicator 1 did away with G-code. It uses X3G instead, which is kind of a digital form of G-code, but it's not G-code, which means you can't use Cura on this machine or a generic slicer. There are some slicers that can make X3G files simplify 3D, for instance, but I haven't been able to get the settings right on this printer yet, so I am relying on WeBuilder, their custom-made slicer, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future, but for now, let's get back to this absolutely fantastic machine. Did I mention the enclosure opens on all sides? It's absolutely fantastic. You can access it from everywhere, and the build plate is removable, which is cool. Now, you might notice that the build plate has these little holes in it. What are those holes for? What's that about? Well, when you run the leveling script on this machine, it's an assisted leveling. But it's not like other assisted leveling. It's the coolest assisted leveling I've ever seen. It takes the nozzle, moves it in place, moves it down so that the sensor is directly over the screw. And it's got a sensor that can tell when it's close to the build plate, but that's high enough out of the way of the nozzles that it needs those holes to let the nozzle settle into. It goes into the build plate, settles those nozzles in, lines up the, the sensor, and then it tells you, hey, this part's too low or this part's too high. Turn the screw one and a half times clockwise or counterclockwise to fix it. You do that. It tells you when to stop. It says, you've done it. Great. And it moves on to the next one. It's just so cool. And it means that you're getting an accurate, perfect level every time. I love it. I absolutely love their auto leveling. Also, no Marlin on this machine. That is a touchscreen interface that is intuitive and easy to use, and I absolutely love it. Oh, did I mention it's a dual nozzle direct drive machine? That means that we can play with flexible filaments, the really soft stuff. We can also play with dissolvable supports, which I haven't done yet, but I'm, I'm going to do soon because they're capable of it. It's, it's, that dual nozzle system is super capable, and 
opens up the possibilities for this machine, not just for dual color prints, although it can do those and it does them very well. This is the test print and it came with a couple of the, uh, when it printed, it prints like this with kind of a skirt that goes all the way up it. And this skirt is supposed to keep the other nozzle while it's drooling away from, from the print. It'll wipe it off on that skirt. It mostly works. You can see a line up the side, but that's been a problem since the very beginning. This one, this is the low poly dyno uh, pterodactyl, but remixed to dual color by Pedro from Adafruit. Thank you very much for your remix. It's super cool. But when I printed this one, the ooze wall is what it's called, kind of hugged the inside of the print. So that ooze wall went underneath the bridging. In order to get it out, I had to clip it off. I've never seen an ooze wall that did that, but it, it, the final print that comes out of it is fantastic. And even when it does single color prints, people coming into the makerspace have looked at this silly little print and said, holy smokes, that is amazing, which it's not amazing to me. I've seen 3D printers that can do this all the time, but they are impressed just by the test prints that came out of this machine. I also printed this. It's a very large print that is a part of the Alien 3D model. Uh, they, he's doing a community print, and if you'd like to get in on that, this printed just on this part. It, it was hanging out, and when I left it at night, I was like, oh man, this thing's gonna fail by the morning, but then I came in, and sure enough, it had succeeded and was just sitting there waiting for me like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to Alien 3D. But this printer having the bigger print volume enabled me to do stuff like that. It's also got filament out detection. Although its filament feed system is a bit odd, it comes in on the side here and it has no mounting for the filament. You have to use these loose filament holders that they have and getting two of them over here is just weird, uh, but you could mount them above or something and I'm probably gonna do something like that, but this is where the filament out detection is. And then it snakes around and there's a little bit of a gap until it goes into the extruder, but that's okay. Like I said, it's a direct drive. That's where it's doing the pulling from. So that little gap doesn't actually matter. It just, it makes it a little bit hard to feed in, especially stiff filaments, cause you're going over almost a 90 degree bend. I've cut that tube a little bit longer or shorter rather, so that I have a longer area to feed it into. It's not perfect, but it's, it's functional. And it also has an onboard camera, which their copy says that one day that will be able to detect if your print is failing and pause the print if you get a detachment from the build plate. The software for this is already out there. I see people working on it and I'm super excited to see it implemented in this machine, but that is not a feature that at this time for this printer has been implemented, but hopefully it will be soon. Now, unfortunately, even this printer at its price is not perfect. This particular one arrived damaged. When it came, the power supply inside of it had not been bolted down. So during shipping, it rattled around inside there, tearing up components, having a great time across the trip, but not so good for the rest of it. Now, because of circumstances that happened around the time when this came to me, we do, when I contacted them and said, hey, uh, this looks like it's been damaged, they offered to take it back and get it fixed and send me a new one. But I said, hey, let, let me just be willing to work with me on this one. And they were. And so I told them what the problem was. They sent me the parts to fix it. Didn't charge me a penny for it. That's what you pay for a lot of the times with these bigger 3D printers. It's not just the bells and whistles. It's the corporate support. You're not relying on community. You're not relying on amateurs and other people. You get actual a customer support who's talking to actual engineers, who's giving you the right solutions the first time. And it's really fantastic. And that's, again, that's what the price tag is on this one, but also the bells and whistles. But for me, that corporate support is fantastic. And I thank we do for having my back on getting this machine up and running. And now that it's up and running, I'm really, really happy with it. I've been having a good time doing little prints with it, printing a dual color, large scale volcano that just you guys will see more about this. Any other complaint I have about this machine basically boils down to, I don't like WeBuilder, their custom slicer that they need. It's, it's very new and it has 
it shows that it's very new. It has a lot of development that it has to go through. So look at the date that I, I aired this because chances are they have iterated that development and made that slicer better. But why didn't they just go with flash print or simplify 3D or any of the other open box solutions? I don't know. They, they, they could and should do that and it would be a credit to them. That would be the, the biggest complaint that I have with this machine is, is their slicer is just not mature enough because it's not mature. It's still brand stank, spanking new. But otherwise, it's a fantastic machine. Now, if I sound like I'm not super excited to recommend this machine to people, it's because I've seen the future and I've seen things that I wish this machine could do. And that's not the fault of this machine. It's just that, well, I'll have to tell you about this machine in the future. But for now, overall, this machine has pleased the heck out of me and its capability and its ease of use really makes it a good machine worth recommending honestly great machine to have the 3d printing professor is supported by you viewers like you can support videos like this directly on paypal and patreon and make the projects and builds you see possible to support find the links wherever links are found So which one of these printers are you going to pick? Well, I think that the answer is probably already made for you. If you're an individual on a tight budget, a $200 3D printer stripped down and functional is probably all you can get. And so that decision's made for you. But if you're a company or a group, maybe even a maker space that wants to have a 3D printer that a lot of people can use easier and that is more capable and functional, having a 3D printer like the WeDo F192 on hand is probably a good choice. But like I said, the choice has probably already been made for you. Still, if you can afford it, I'm pretty happy to have this on hand and I'm excited to use it in the future. You're going to see a lot more from this printer coming in the future, but that's all for now. If I've forgotten anything that I wanted to say about these two printers, remember, I always have notes in my blog at 3dpprofessor.com, so you can go check that out. There will be a link in the comments to the blog post about this specific video. And while you're down there, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about these printers. Have you used the Ender 3 or have you used a more expensive machine and how do you feel about them? But as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon backers and as always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Let me see, what else do I have? Over two, over a thousand. Without the embedded beds uh, uh, stands. Mm. Because flash print has, flash, <laughs> flash print, flash forge. All right, let's shoot the opening and ending. Did I say that I've seen the future? I hope I have.